Father God, all we want is more of you. Father, we're here not for ourselves this morning, but to raise our hands, our voices, our hearts to you in worship, to praise you, almighty God. I just want to thank you for all that you do for each person in this house this morning. Father, just speak into our lives. Touch us in a mighty and powerful way. Amen. Would you give the Lord a big hand clap this morning? Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Church in Baldavis. This is the place to be, isn't it? Keep on sowing seed, guys, because there'll be no harvest in the future if you don't plant some seed now. We're in a series called Taking the Next Step, and uh, whatever the next step is for you, maybe you need to take it. It'll be no crop in the future, but here we are. We're going to sow some seed for God in Jesus' name. Take this time to move around, say hello to someone, find someone that you've never met or someone you haven't seen for a while, give them the best greeting, encourage them this morning in Jesus' name. Good morning, how are we doing? Where would you rather be than worshipping in the house of God this morning? Amen? Amen. Amen. Take a seat, please. Would you pull out your newsletters, start having a flick through there? Would you pull out your care cards? And I want you to look at the little box and the word next to it that says baptism. And if that word is speaking to you this morning or has been speaking to you of late, then maybe you need to be involved in our next baptism class which will be running very very soon on the 13th of november so if you feel like god's speaking to you about baptism would you just tick that little box and be involved in that class if you're not sure about baptism then that class is going to tell you everything you need to know about that so would you just tick that little box encourage someone this morning use that little space at the bottom send an encouraging word to someone in the church If you're new with us, there's a spot where you can fill out your details. Church Together is coming up very, very soon. Who's going to church together? Most people are going to church together. I would like to see everyone's hand up. I think that's going to be a fantastic event. 9,000 plus people. We now have nearly 150 churches registered for Church Together in Perth. I think that's amazing. And we may see much, much more than 9,000 people there. And there could be hundreds, hundreds that are saved on that very evening. So I think we should get excited about that. I think we should support that event and all be part of that Get on the Church Together website, print out the map, plan ahead, make sure you've got your transport organised because it will be take a little bit of planning if you're going to go by car, but I would encourage you to get on the train. That's going to be the way to go. Okay, but plan ahead, make sure you know what you're doing with that. We're having a busy bee, 12th of November. If you can set some time aside and support the church, we're going to give this place a bit of a spruce up. We're going to get here early on the Saturday morning bring some gear, also bring some morning tea to share. We're going to get here early and spend the morning giving the place a bit of a spruce up. So if you can be part of that, that would be fantastic. Final thing, celebration dinner. If you call call the Baldivis Church your home, make sure you're registered and bought your tickets for celebration dinner. It's just a few weeks away. That's going to be fantastic for looking at the next step at the Baldivis Church. So be part of that, won't you? Get your tickets nice and early. And uh, while you're filling out your care cards, church news will be up on your screen. Proverbs 3.9 in the NLT says, Honour the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. God promises to meet all of our financial needs if we ask him for help, if we learn to be content with what we have and if we practice giving in faith. There's a universal law called sowing and reaping and we've been singing already this morning about sowing. If we sow in criticism, that's what we're going to reap. If we sow in generosity, it's going to come back to us so that we in turn can continue to give and reap generosity. Every farmer knows about this. A farmer with four sacks of seed in his barn looks at an empty field. He doesn't complain. He just goes out and starts planting his seed. When you have a need, you plant the seed. It might seem a bit strange that when you need something, you should give away. But that's why faith is required. God says, my ways are not your ways. And God set it up this way because God is a giver. He is the most generous giver in the universe. And God wants us to learn to be more like him. He wants to build character in us. 
The Bible says, honour the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. This is also our principle for tithing. And tithing is an act of wor worship. God says to us, put me first in your life and watch what I do. You may think that you can't afford to tithe, but the reality is you can't afford not to. Church, let's stand. And as we sing our next song, the offering buckets will be passed around. You can pop your tithes and your offerings and your care cards in there. Please be seated. Hey, I just want to tell you something before we get underway with the message. And uh, it's in your newsletter. And we put these things out in mobile coffee van and you saw that up on the screen right our coffee shops under review you see you business people you know that if you're running at a loss you've got to do a serious review and the coffee shop has been running at a loss so it's under review for numerous reasons and that's one of them and uh, so this morning because you want your caffeine fix and we don't want to disappoint you we've got a van pulling up out here and they will sell your cappuccinos uh, your mochas, your hot chocolates. Some of you say, well, man, I think it's going to warm up by about 11 o'clock. I'd like a cool drink. They'll do cool drinks. Your kids are going to love you. They do cookies, other stuff. You're going to hate it when your kids want all that stuff, but it's all there for you this morning. See how that goes. We're just trialling this. Cafe to you. You'll be pulling up out there in the driveway. It's near the brick paving area, so just two or three steps from the al fresco. And uh, if you're new here this morning, if you've met someone new here this morning, here's the deal. Buy them a coffee. Treat them. Bless them. You look so serious. I'm going to have to pray for you in a minute. <laughs> the nature of the church. You know, the nature of the church. This, this is what I strike in all sorts of circumstances all around the place. Not just in our church, but beyond because I have a lot to do with denominational people. I'm on a denominational board and... I find that people think the church was kind of like always there and what you need to do is just tack your little option and opinion and idea onto it and, and, and like that. Well, here's the thing. The church had a beginning. Each one did. This one did. It wasn't always here. The whole idea about church is that it needs to be built. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock... I will build, I will build, I will build, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus is building his church. And furthermore, he is asking us to be on his building team. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Uh, what these verses are saying altogether that Jesus is building his church and we are his trades assistants we are sharing in the building program with him. The whole idea about church is to continue to build. Our primary role is to build his church. And all of our missions endeavors have this at their heart, to build his church. That's it. We preach, we teach, we preach the gospel. Uh, we are driven by eternity to build his church. We're on about building his church. So last... Sunday we shared a whole lot of steps that we have taken in obedience to God in building this church from day one when we started. You know, we made a start. I was there when we started. We had no money. We had no nothing. We had no people, really. We had no projector. Now I've got a fancy screen up here and I can see what the picture is right here and what's going to happen next. All the pictures. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at those pictures. We started. We, we bought this property. We shared this story last week. And uh, we, we built. Let's just go back there. Let's, let's go back. Can we go back? Oh, let's go back. There we go. That's the one I want you to see. <laughs> look at that handsome fellow doing the compacting right about here. This could all go down. It's a bit eye compacted. Uh, yes, he does, doesn't he? Well, it's not that long ago, my friends. Thank you. <laughs> it's like 11 years ago. We moved in here in November 2000, so it's coming up for... 11 years since we've been here. We, we started this church 19 years ago this month, right? It seems like a day ago. In some ways, in other ways, it seems like a century ago. <laughs> it all depends how you look at it. We, we, we started with nothing. We had naught, nil, zilch. 
we, we borrowed an overhead projector, one of those old overhead projectors, you know, once you put the transparencies on, that, that's how we started, and we made all those transparencies. You know. But what we did have, we had a heart for God. We had a heart for mission. Uh, we, 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 we didn't know a whole lot of stuff, but we knew that if we went out in faith for God and wanted to win the lost for Christ, we could build his church. And uh, as a leadership, we need, knew we needed to listen ever so carefully to his voice to see what he wanted us to do next. He wanted us to buy this property, you know, and it, well, we did for $375,000, you know, in 97. And, uh, and uh, you know, we had no money, but we got uh, interest-free vendor finance and we raised huge amounts of money in order to make that happen. Like $40,000 in two months, less than two months. Like another 60000 in six months. Like another 70000 in another six months. And people just kept on giving, you know. So here's what I want to say. And this should be on your slide next. You've seen all those pictures there. God has positioned us on this campus. This campus. Let's go back to this campus because it was a fairly tacky looking campus to start off with. Let's go back. Let's go back. That's the Children's Ministry Center. That, that one. That's what it looked like. Day one, God has positioned, there was no freeway, no houses, no Baldiver Central, about a quarter of, uh, of, of Settlers Hills, no other, no other houses in Baldivers, no, no, no scheme water. Oh my goodness, still isn't for someone, that's us, right? But it's coming. There was just nothing here, nothing, just this tragic property. God positioned us on this campus. Are we positioned? Yes, we are. And, and how we got our first building. Here we go. Another slide here. Yeah, yeah. We poured the concrete. Uh, we, we compacted the thing. And uh, we built a building, you know. And then we built the children's ministry centre. Yeah, yeah. We poured the concrete there. And we built the building. And then we settled. We stood on the property. We uh, dedicated to the Lord. God has positioned us here. And he provided for us so we could build an adm admin centre and make a new foyer there. And uh, he has provided for us. He has led us. He has given us the staff that we now have. Oh, my goodness. Look at those handsome people, aren't they? Find a, find a staff member after the service and say, you are so good looking. No wonder you're on staff here. And he has provided for us with programs and ministries. And, and uh, uh, each one of these has been a next step. And, uh, and, and we've taken, the, taken all these steps, but we haven't yet arrived. It's not as if, oh my goodness, we've taken all the steps we did take. Wait, there we are, we're arrived. We're in the patch here. No! He's got all these next steps. God continues to call us on to take the next step. As a church, we are nothing like we were this time 12 months ago. We didn't have a foyer then. We didn't have a lot of you people that are sitting here now. You weren't here then. And in 12 months' time, we will not be the same church again. We'll be a totally different church. There will be changes in times of services. There will be changes in programs. There will be changes in the way we do things around here. Uh, there will be new people, lots of new people. Lots and lots of new people. Someone new that you don't know yet that will get here earlier than you do on a Sunday morning and pinch your favourite parking spot and sit in your favourite chair. And wherever you like sitting, you won't be able to sit there anymore because someone else will be there. There will be new missions opportunities. So exciting that uh, early this year we uh, sent a team off to Port Hedland and uh, Chris had the opportunity on Friday night to go and speak to a group up at Rivervale about our, uh, our opportunity there and we have some other opportunities coming up. You just need to watch this space and I will tell you about them as it all unfolds. Uh, fresh evangelistic cutting edge as we reach out uh, uh, to people in our communities in the spires that's right here. And, and yes, there will be another building project on, on the horizon, on our agenda. And did I say new programs? Yes, I did, didn't I? Well, talking about new programs, Pastor Alethea and Pastor Bronwyn have had the opportunity to connect uh, with someone who is a relative of someone who comes here who's been involved with something called Camp Sunshine. And they, uh, Pastor Alethea and Pastor Bron had this Skype meeting uh, with these people, uh, I think, last uh, Wednesday evening. And uh, I just need to tell you something about this opportunity because it's going to cause some of you to take the next step. Pastor Bron, come on up, would you please? Give her a great big round of applause. <laughs> this interview, it's a great interview. We've uh, already worked out the questions and answers for this. It's kind of like, uh, Pastor Bron, what's Camp Sunshine? Um, all right, Camp Sunshine is an international organisation based in Maryland in 
the USA. So Skype is a fantastic medium to speak to someone right in the other side of the world in our own lounge room. We had the opportunity to do connect with uh, David Black, the, um, the head guy of Camp Sunshine, along with um, Bethany, who is our contact here. She approached us earlier this year about um, having a think about some connections with Camp Sunshine and it's over the, over the last few months Alethea and I have um, prayed about it and talked about it and, and hashed a few things out and we we're ready to make some connections. So we've connected with Camp Sunshine, this international organisation. Do you want me to keep going? Uh, well, uh, yeah, just, just what do they do? What is it? What are they okay. going to do? Um, well, in, in America, the culture is very big. They have, they have camps. Everyone's heard about Camp America. And, um, you know, we have lots of Australian young people going and working in camps in America. The opportunity that seems that is produ um, presenting itself to us is the opportunity to, for them to partner with us to run our own day holiday camp or holiday program here. Um, what that means is that we get to to draw on the resources, the expertise, the support, the encouragement and all that they bring to work with us here, with our local team, with our local kids in our own building. But we get to have the benefits of their expertise. They will bring um, a small team from the US. They will gather um, expat, well, ex-camp ex sunshiners that are back here in Australia now. Um, and they will come and train and work with us with our own team and with our own people. And uh, we will, the plan is that we will present our own holiday program here on it, the it campus. It lasts for one week. Well, at this stage, we're just planning one week. It's a, it's a big deal. It's done very well. So one week. Right here a, on this campus? Yep. Yeah. Da, we, call, we call it day camp. So we won't be sleeping the kids over so if you're getting a bit excited their parents we will send them home at the end of the day but the plan is um five day well it actually will be seven days with all the the things that are involved for the kids okay now uh, see to do this you can't pull it off in five minutes it takes planning it's not going to happen tomorrow it's not even going to happen this summer right pastor bronze so We've settled on a date, and I'll give you time to think about this because we're urging you to take the next step, right? So when, when, what's the date? Um, 14th of January 2013. 2013, guys. <laughs> it's not far um, away. It, you know, it, to do it properly, to do it well, to be resourced. The other thing is, at the moment, we've got a lot of sand and emptiness around us. And as Pastor Gordon was saying earlier, this time next year, the landscape will be remarkably different. And um, Aletha and I really worked through this and we've been in consultation and we're just so excited at the possibility of having these kids that will come to our program, they'll walk to our program. They will leave their home and they'll walk the street and they will join us. So we're, we're thinking big we want to have a camp, a program that's catering at least 100 kids. Um, we've got a fantastic facility here and we're sitting in prime outreach place here. So we, we're really excited. They're excited, these crazy Americans. One of the questions that David said to me was, so uh, how, how do uh, your people and the, where you live, how do you think they'd feel about Americans coming in and uh, being part of the program? And, we kind of laughed and I said, well, I have a sister-in-law that went to America and never came back. And uh, I said, I think the feel for Americans is it's pretty good. I said, I think we think you're slightly crazy, but, but pretty good. So, look, we're excited to have them come and inject some um, life and, well, just inject some professionalism, train us, teach us. Um, and it will take the whole of next year for us to get a great base and a, a great launching because it's not a one-off program. Their, their plan is that they partner with us and resource us and train us and then we launch from there. The great thing is that it's not a parachurch thing. They're not coming to do something out here. They're coming to it with us. And I guess this is why I'm here now talking about 2013 because they're here to work with our people. So what I'm asking from you guys 
is that I've just sowed it, put a wild seed out there, and you're thinking, 2013, I haven't even got 2012 organised yet. But you know what? Someone will take that. I know that someone here will take it and put it in their heart and, and think on it. And you know, I want that seed to grow. You'll hear more about this in, over the next 12 months. Um, but, you know, if I've got to throw the seed out there, and if it catches in your heart, and you want to water it and jump on board and, and partner with us in this, then um, come see Aletheia and I over the next coming months and share, share your interaction with us and help us get excited. We want you to be excited because it's not a Pastor Aletheia and Pastor Bron gig. Um, we, we're looking to, to use the talents that we have. And we already have great teams. We have a youth team. We have a kids' church team. We, have, um, we already have... Um, very talented and creative people that have got giftings with kids so but you know maybe this is an opportunity for you to um, think about widening your sphere or getting involved in some way. Fantastic uh, we're going to talk more about this as time unfolds you're going to hear more from time to time and see how you can partner with this. Thank you Pastor Bron if you could give that microphone to Lara give Bron a big round of applause would you thanks guys thanks Pastor Bron she's back to the Children's Ministry Centre now uh, where we extracted her from so she can minister to our kids over there. Fantastic. You're going to be he hearing more about this. 100 kids on this property. You, unless you're volunteering, you probably won't want to be here for that because it's going to be kid power. All right. <laughs> Last Sunday, we uh, began following the pattern of Joshua. Uh, in Joshua chapter 1, uh, that's what we're going to look at this morning in chapter 2. And we discovered that as God calls us forward, he promises his place for us. He promises his courage for us. He promises his presence in us. And he promises his peace for us. So uh, for those of you who missed last week, hey, you get more than the message last week too. We had three folk up here sharing uh, about the fundraising endeavours that you saw on your screen earlier on. So go on a website, podcast, uh, 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 YouTube, and, and check that message out. But until we step out for God's call... Uh, at his call, none of those promises will come to fruition for us in us at all. But when it comes, when it comes, uh, when it comes to God calling the local church forward, we just do well to remember it's a team effort. It's just not individuals doing their thing, you know. Uh, you know, it's the book of Judges. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. That you know, churches, any organisation, need uh, policies, protocols, and procedures. And if you don't work with that, you're not working with the team, you're doing your thing. So think about how this campus got here and these buildings and the staff and the programs and how they all got financed and so on. We had no sponsors. It wasn't as if there were sponsors. We, we had no denominational financial gifts because we started as an independent church. God touched the hearts of his people in this church. Matthew 6.21, where your treasure is, there will what? be your heart also so uh, God touched the hearts and we stepped out together uh, with our resources as individuals but we became a team putting those together in terms of our time our treasure and our talent in, in answer to the call of God uh, with God's place for us God's courage for us God's presence in us and God's peace for us uh, and now here's the thing I said earlier on a lot of you have joined with us in the last couple of years so you weren't part of that journey uh, but you can be part of the journey part of the team right now as we take the next step together. And today I'm going to talk to you about making plans at local church level and believing God. That's what I want to talk about. And you know that Moses was the leader who led the people out of Egypt toward the promised land and the whole idea was that he would lead them into the promised land uh, but his process of planning uh, to enter the promised land was not well executed and it stalled his entry into the land for 40 years. We're about to enter into something here guys and we do not want it to be stalled by poor execution, uh, all that time was lost. So when it came to Joshua to lead the people into the promised land, he had a more excellent pattern for leading people in than, than did Moses and no more time was lost. In fact, what Moses had was a committee. What Joshua had was a task force. And big question, will it be committee or task force? As someone said, God so loved the world that he did not send a committee. It has still been stalled. Moses' committee did not further the cause of God, nor did it further the cause of the people 
that the individuals on that committee represented. Uh, in fact, that committee sent them backwards in their thinking, in their actions, and in their position. They went backwards, and the outcome of Moses' committee plan and, and the outcome of Joshua's task force, they're recorded for all times. They're there, you can see it, it's in your book. And in fact, uh, sadly, uh, the names of Moses' committee, they're there, and you can see these are the guys that became duds for the cause of God. Here they are, uh, the, from the tribe of Reuben, Shamuah, son of Zachur, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, son of Hori, uh, from the tribe of Judah was Caleb, son of uh, Jephunneh. Well, he, he, he ended up, he was barracking for the cause of God. He was one of two that did that. The tribe of Issachar, Egal, son of Joseph, he did not barrack for the cause of God. From the tribe of Ephraim, Joshua, son of Nun, and from the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, son of Raphu, and so on. Goes right through the 12 of them, of the 12, 10 brought back a negative report, and two, brought back a positive report and the problem was Moses sent these spies out not to find out if we could take the land he sent them out to see how to take the land remember it's called the promised land someone has promised the land otherwise it's not called the promised land and the one who has promised the land is God and if God has made a promise what are we going to do to figure out if we can take it when he has promised it now we're going to figure out how to take it. And they came back and they figured out, they came back and their report was uh, sort of uh, couched around, should we take this land or not? Well, God has promised it, so it, it's, it's not your place to decide. It's not your place even to decide if you're going to live on this planet. God's already put you here. What you need to figure out is how to live the abundant life on this planet. Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full have it more abundantly so we just need to figure out not if we'll live here we're already here god put us here but how to live the abundant life and consequently they brought back their report they maximized in their report they maximized the position of the enemy and minimized their own position and negativity will always do that numbers 13 1 the lord said to moses send up send some men to explore the land of canaan which i am giving to you the land i am giving to you so it, it's not up, up to us to decide if God said I'm promising you land well the land is yours you just need to figure out how to do it uh, God wants his church to grow and to be built so it's not up to will we build the church will we grow the church no God has said you will we just need to figure out how to do that and not only we, we need we need to figure out not only how we will partner with God in growing this church but how to accommodate the growth that he is sending us and he is. We need to figure that out. And he's given us that, that, that privilege of figuring that out. So don't ever maximize the position of the enemy and minimize your own position. Uh, don't do that with a negative attitude, a negative response, and a negative report. So Moses' uh, committee, committee's mission was a failed mission because of a poor report by a poor committee. They maximized the position of the enemy in the esteem of the faith community that they represented. Hey, watch this. Numbers 13, 28. They came back. They said, the people who live there are powerful. Numbers 13, 31. We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Numbers 13, 33. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. And, and I think, well, you know, in their own eyes, that, that's, they could say that, but how do they know what they look like in the eyes of the others? Did they, these so-called giants, did they look up to the giants and say, do we look like grasshoppers to you? <laughs> do we? Yes, we do. Don't stamp on us, you know. Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Uh, and, and they thought negative thoughts. They, they, they said, they're giants, we are grasshoppers. That's how we look to ourselves. That's obviously how we look to them. A committee of 12, 10 brought back a negative report and two brought back a God report. Caleb and Joshua already knew the New Testament principle, Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb already knew the New Testament principle, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And they spoke against the negative uh, evil report. Joshua and Caleb said this, Numbers 14, 8 and 9. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Uh, the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. <laughs> I look at it and I think, I know which guys I want on my team. I want Joshua and Caleb. I do not want the other committee on my team. 
I just don't want the other guys at all. So Moses sent out 12 spies. Now think about this. To whom should they report? To whom should they report when they come back? Well, if I send you out, you're coming back to report to Gordon. Otherwise, I did not really send you. And uh, thinking about this, and Chris went up to Rivervale on Friday night and, and uh, gave a report, actually, of, of our Port Hedland trip as part of a seminar up there on Friday evening. And I know when the guys came back from Port Hedland, you know, I commissioned them as the leader of the church. They reported back to me before they reported to the general congregation. They said, this is what we're thinking of doing. What do you think? And I said, this is the way to do it. We're going to set you up out the back out there. We're going to give you a microphone. We're going to have coffee. We're going to have biscuits. We're going to have cake. And uh, you're going to talk to us about what happened. And they report to me first. And then they reported to the congregation. And, and th see, that's, that's the way it's done. These guys, though, did not report back to Moses. They reported back to everyone. And so it was never gone through a filter. In Numbers 13, 26, they, they came to Moses and Aaron and to the whole Israelite community. They reported to them and to the whole community. And guess what happened? The grumbling started. The murmuring started. And often, too often in church life all around the world, that's how it is. If we allow ourselves to listen to the negative reports about the next step, you know what happens next? And Well, that next step, that wasn't a good idea. Whose idea was that? I don't know, it was the pastor, that's who it was. It was the board, you know. And we start getting all negative about not just the next step and the ministry, but about the pastor and the pastoral team and the staff and the board and then the whole church and the ministry and the negativity will spread like a cancer. You won't want to stop. Numbers 13, 32, they spread a bad report among the Israelites. Numbers 14, 2, they grumbled against the leaders. Number 14, 3, let's go back to Egypt. Numbers 14, 10, the whole assembly talked about stoning the leaders. So, well, it wasn't that bad of them back then. It hasn't stopped in church life, folks. Not in this one, of course, but you get what I'm saying. Numbers 14, 23, God said, Not one of these people who treated me with contempt will ever see the promised land. But because Joshua and Caleb have a different spirit, I'll bring them into the land. That's worth thinking about, isn't it? Whenever we get the negative spirit, when we wake up with the grumpies, you know, Get that grumpy spirit going on, start to bag off and send someone a nasty little missile, you know. It's worth thinking about. But now a whole new day has come. Moses has died and Joshua has become the senior pastor. And thinking about that, Joshua has been trained and sharpened and groomed for this role and responsibility by Moses, not for five minutes, not even for one year, but for a long period of time, he's been groomed for the role and the position, which is pretty well God's way of doing it because, you know, the same with Elijah and Elisha. It didn't happen like the next day. It was years and years. That's worth thinking about too. Joshua 1.1, 1, 1, newsflash. Moses, my servant, is dead. What God is saying is this is a new day and Joshua has learned some very important lessons. He's learned to choose very carefully those who he will send out to do the exploratory work on his behalf. He's learned do not choose a committee of 12 and make a public statement. He's learned choose two people and send them out very quietly without telling anyone what he's doing. Joshua 2.2, 2. Joshua secretly sent two spies out. And this small task force would report back to Joshua before that report got any wider publication. Uh, Joshua 2, 23, 24, they've been out, they've come back. They came to Joshua and said to Joshua, and they gave him the whole report. And I think, you know, Nehemiah, hundreds of years later than this, he, he did the same thing. He's going to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, but he doesn't have a public meeting and says, what we're going to do, and I'm going to send 12 out, and they're going to report back to everyone. Nehemiah 2.12, I set out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone what God had put on my heart to do for Jerusalem. So the report came to the leader first before wider publication. Now, here's an interesting thing about the approach of Moses' committee and the differing approach of Joshua's hand-picked small task force. Watch this. Moses' committee was looking for grapes. Moses' committee was looking for grapes. Uh, Numbers 13, verse 23, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes 
and two of them carried on a pole between them, which tells you that was a big, huge cluster of grapes. It took two guys to carry this cluster of grapes. But here's the point. Moses' committee was looking for grapes. Joshua's team, on the other hand, they were looking for people connections. Not grapes, people. And as the story unfolds, Joshua's task force were men of faith. They knew they were going to take Jericho. They just had to figure out how they're going to take it. And folks, we will take this city for God. The spires is coming. There are a thousand people moving in just around the boundaries of our church, just there. I don't know a few people that come through Baldives. So Lara and I had to go to Coles yesterday, and, and that, that, that was mad city over there. The whole Coles car park packed out. Or maybe it was the, maybe it was the Macca's car park. I don't know. It's all the same one, isn't it? Uh, maybe it was the Dome car park. Oh, yes, I was there earlier on the day too. Yeah, but the whole place is backed out. There are people everywhere. And I'm thinking if those people are everywhere on a, on a Saturday afternoon at the Stockland Shopping Centre car park, they need to come to church. And, and, and you see, we will take this city for God. It's just a matter of figuring out how, that's all. So Joshua's, got, Joshua, Joshua's men, they're not out looking for grapes. They're looking out to connect with people. The key people of the city. Now you watch this as unfolds. Granted, they were not in the dome coffee shop. Weren't even in Jamaica Blue. Weren't even in Coles. Uh, if there was a Woolies, didn't go to Warnborough for Woolies. Didn't go to Bunnings or the new Woolies hardware store that's coming up near the corner. They didn't front up to the Chamber of Commerce. Where they ended up was in the home of Rahab the prostitute. Didn't choose to, well, there, Josh, with your fruity old boys going out. What's going on there? And the only explanation, <laughs> you want to chortle some of you there, didn't you? The only explanation I can come up with as to why they ended up in Rahab's house, she probably knew a lot of men. Joshua 2.1. And so they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Now, as you, you see, what I'm teaching here, you can use with your, taking your next step in your business, your personal life or whatever, right? I'm just talking church, but you can use exactly the same pattern. I am not saying that if you want to know what the next step is for your business or your personal life, you need to go to the prostitute's house, all right? So that's not what I'm saying there. What I am saying is you need to connect with people who will be willing to support you and help you. Any leader of any business, any church, any ministry uh, w w would be arrogant to think that if they have success, it was just them. It's the people that surround you. It's the people you connect with. And, and, and you can say what you like about Rahab and, and her vocation, <laughs> but thousands of years later, we are still reading positive reports about this woman of faith. James 2.25 In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. Hebrews 11.31 By faith the prostitute Rahab because she welcomed the spies was not killed with those who were disobedient. She, she was a woman of faith and she aligned herself with God's plans, God's people and God's purposes. She's a woman of faith. Uh, she was a strategic person for Joshua's spies to be meeting with. Moses' spies came back with a negative report. We can't do it. It's too hard. Let's go back to the status quo. Let's never change. Let's not close down the coffee shop because it's making a loss and get a cafe to you van. Let's get rid of Pastor Moses. We want to do our thing in our way and you'll never play it our way. Well, let's go back to Egypt. What's the difference between that and Joshua's spies? Joshua 2.24, they said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given this whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Moses' team saw big grapes. And if you see big grapes, you see big people. And when you see big people, you may get 
overwhelmed by that, imagine that you can never overcome these big people. Joshua's team spoke to the people of the land and gauged their response, and this is what they discerned. They discerned that the testimony of God's work and power was already known in this place. They discerned that these people were already in awe of God and his people. They discerned that God was giving them what he promised he would, the promised land. They discerned that the presence and the power of God with them would win the day. They discerned what we can discern through New Testament eyes, Romans 8.31. God, if God is for us, who can stand against us? The mightiest power is in our hands. They discerned this and they brought back the positive report. The next step that you may take may be making plans to move on the promises that God has for you as individuals, as couples, as families, whatever that might be. It's not for me to figure out. You need to figure out that. But when it comes to taking the next step for the church to take, I I'm following this Joshua pattern. I'm following this Joshua pattern and I'm continually, hey, you might know this, unless you're one of the two spies that I'm continually sending out. I'm continually sending out a couple of spies to suss out the land, see what's going on. When you make your plans and when you are confronted with the plans of this church, the important thing is attitude. Important thing. So now some folk come along and they say, but you know, from the platform they're asking us to sign up for this, to be a volunteer in this, to get on this roster, that roster. It's your call. I'm just putting it out there because God told me to. Psalm 110 verse 3, my people shall be volunteers. So I, I'm just the spokesperson here and I, I prayed last week, morning and evening, I was praying it as I go this morning, that you would not just hear Gordon's voice or even the crazy voices in your own head, but you'd hear God's voice. You know? Hear God's voice because we want... That, that, and, and if God's calling you on, so well, I don't want to do anything else. Well, don't. You'll probably get in the way of what God's doing with an attitude like that. Don't sign up for any roster if that's how you're feeling. So it's, you, you, you can have this negative grasshopper report attitude of Moses spies, it can't be done, I don't want to do it, uh, let's get everyone grumbling, we're too small, the task is too big, I don't want to do anything else, I just want to stay like I am, I just want a social life, that's the only reason I came to church. You, know? well, you, you can do all of that. You can do all of that if you like. Or you can have the positive, we can do this in Jesus' name. You can have the positive one. Let's get on board with this, you know. And let's get these grasshopper mentality thoughts out of our minds, you know. I think it was William Carey, uh, the, the great Baptist uh, missionary, the called, sometimes called the father of the modern missionary movement, 1761 to 1834. And he said something like this. He said, uh, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. <laughs> In business, we talk about it, be hags which I, I, I wonder about this but in, in church, but I could do it anyway, you know. B-H-A-G-S, big, hairy, audacious goals. Goals, goals, goals. Big, hairy, and I just want to talk about B-Hags, and I call it B-H-A-G-G-G-S, big, hairy, audacious, God-glorifying goals. Amen. And if you're going to hear one of God's goals, they've got to come from God, you'll need to bowl up some pretty big, prayers in order to meet the goals. God is calling this church on to take the next step. There will be changes. There will be changes. Some of that, that's going to sort of bend a bit of us. Some of us sometimes. You know, be changes in programs. Changes in times. Now, there will be other missions opportunities. Some of you never wanted to go to Port Hedland. You say, well, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. I didn't want to go to Samaria. What about the ends of the earth? Well, there'll be some ends of the earth opportunities also. Watch this space. And there will be a sharpened evangelistic focus. We're doing a program uh, beginning next year in our small groups on Sunday mornings called More to Life. And you'll be showing your video clip in the next few weeks about this up on the screen here. There will be more growth. There will be new people. Lots of new people. You see, the people that call this their spiritual home, if they all rocked up here one Sunday, we can't fit them in, right? Because we have a lot of one in threes, one in fours, one in twos. Uh, we just couldn't fit you all in if you all came. And you don't know everyone. I don't know everyone. I met someone in the shopping centre just yesterday. Hello, Pastor Gordon. Are you in my church? <laughs> when I, 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 I said it last week. I want to say it again. When I first saw this property. There we are. That's that picture we're about to put up there. Sit up. The next. 
yeah, a picture of this derelict property. It's coming up. I know it's coming up. There we go. When I first saw this property, it was ugly. Ruth, I told the story last week with your, your uh, Toyota van and I borrowed my daughter-in-law's father's vehicle trailer and we filled that up with junk here and took it down to the tip and got there at 10 past five and they closed at five and we had to park it here all, till the next day. And, then, and that didn't even make a mark on the dereliction of this place. It was just like there'd been previous civilizations here and they'd left their bits and pieces behind, you know. And, and it's still coming up, that's right. They still pop up. But God showed me a vision of what it could become. He showed me these buildings before I, I, I saw the invisible. Before it came, he showed, all these buildings aren't really it though, and the next one that's going to come. It's about the people. See, the buildings are just tools. They're just vehicles by which we build. I saw the people coming. I saw people coming every day of the week. And I don't need faith to see that anymore. They're already coming every day of the week. There's people coming on campus for playgroups and mops and youth and it goes on and on and it's just come streaming on here. But it's just beginning. That's like the trickle, which will become a downpour. It's just the beginning. Uh, the buildings are not the goal. They're tools. They're vehicles, you know. And God has positioned us here for such a time as this to connect with more and more people, not as an end in itself. That's not the point. But so that we can be part of his plan to enable more and more people to connect with him. He's building his church. And he asks us to be fellow builders with him. But you can't be part of that until you're connected with him. Father in heaven, I want to thank you that you've placed us here for such a time as this. And not just so that we can enjoy each other socially, but so that in your Holy Spirit's power, we can be fellow builders with you. Father, I want to pray for everyone in the house this morning. We all come with our own stories, our own burdens, our own baggage, if you will, Lord. This morning in these moments of ministry, Father, I'm praying that we'll leave all our baggage at the foot of the cross. The burdens, the, the weights that we feel, Holy Spirit, that you'll relieve us of the burden, you'll help us to process our thoughts, help us to be part of the team that you've been building here, part of the building of this church. Lord, you want us to walk together, to encourage one another, challenge one another, that there'll be a synergy, a synergy so there'll be much more achieved by our teamwork than the sum total of the individual efforts. Our Father, I'm praying for those this morning who either need to surrender to you for the very first time or those who have and the wheels have fallen off and they need to rededicate themselves to you to be reinvigorated and re-empowered by your Spirit. And Father, I'm praying for all of us, whatever that next step is, if it's stepping out into the programs, the ministries, the next part of the adventure you have for us, whether it's believers, baptism, whatever that might be, Father, help each one this morning to take that next step. I commend us to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let's stand, folks, side by side, side by side. That's the song we got to sing. As we sing our song, if you need ministry this morning, if you're going to make that commitment to Christ, you know, for the very first time, re rededicate your life to Christ. Uh, it, 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 plan to take that next step in Christ. Would you come and step down here this morning? You can do all that right where you stand or sit in the congregation. There's something powerful about doing it publicly, and I'll have folk who will move up with you and pray with you this morning and encourage you in Jesus' name. Let's sing together. Father, thanks for calling us together, that we might walk and work together, that might do mission and ministry together for you. Thank you, Father, for, for positioning us right here for such a time as this. Father, we want to pray for all the people that are going to move into the spires right around us and all the other folk in Valdivis and beyond with whom we have connections and ministry. Help us, Father, to take the next step. We might continue to build your church.
we might continue to reach out and see other people connected to you, our Lord and our God. Father, for everyone in the house this morning, once more I pray for each one. Father, you know uh, the things that they're grappling with, struggling with, trying to sort out. Holy Spirit, give them clarity of thought, give them wisdom, uh, give them empowerment, help them to move forward, help them to step out in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Folks, before you move, I just want to tell you some things. This corner over here is prayer corner. We call that prayer corner. If you're needing prayer for anything, head to that corner and there'll be folk there to pray with you and for you. Uh, apart from people doing ministry there, we encourage everyone else for fellowship and chit-chatting to one another to move into the foyer and the coffee shop. And I need to tell you, the van is there waiting to do business with you and you go and buy yourself a cappuccino. Met someone new this morning, buy them a cappuccino, bless them, would you? And uh, fantastic. Check out the bookshop, information desk, sign up for the various things that Pastor Les mentioned earlier on. And uh, love to see you back here tonight, 6 o'clock tonight. Have a fantastic service here tonight. And uh, look forward to seeing you here tonight. Bless you. Have a good day. Thank you.